Now there's a pretty cool way to scout for summer bucks and uh, it's something that you can enjoy as a whole family, friends. Uh, we did it back in the day, jerky, a couple sodas and hit the road. But um, but it's, it's more than that. It's not just why these bucks are out during certain times during the summer, but it's how you can apply that to your fall hunt. And I'm gonna talk about that because practice makes perfect. And when you notice these trends and you understand them during the summertime, you can apply them to any time of the year, let alone hunting season. And this is why I've shot so many bucks going back for three decades, more than the three decades. I hunt by the weather purely. The weather can predict exactly when to go out and hunt. And I'll talk about, you know, you can talk about the moon, different other, uh, other aspects that influence deer movement. But when it comes to the weather, let's just look at the extremes of weather. Look at the extremities. You have a blizzard and it's 75 mile an hour winds are the deer going to move no tornado no uh thunder showers big driving rains no i'm not saying they don't ever move they might move to get to shelter high winds 50 mile an hour plus 30 mile an hour plus they just simply don't move and look at the extremities of severe cold when you get down to minus 30 and it's minus 30 at daybreak. They're not moving at daybreak. They're moving during the day when it heats up to minus 10. And the flip side, 90 degrees, 80 degrees on a November day in Ohio. They're not moving too much. It might be a drop to 80 in Florida from an average of 95. They're going to move. So it's all relative when it comes to that. I'm going to talk about what you're looking for, how you can find summer bucks, and how you can apply that to the fall. Number one, the setup. This is where it begins. The bigger, the badder. The weather change and the weather pattern and the stronger the pattern, the more deer are going to be influenced to move. I'm looking for high winds, extreme weather, whether that's driving rain, thunder, lightning, sleet, all of the above, maybe a big snowstorm. You're combining all that together. And then what does that do? It ushers in a great cold front. That's what happens all the time. So you're looking for these major cold front pushes. The bigger, the badder the weather change, the higher the winds, typically the more the drop. A moderate drop will be eight to 12 mile an hour, or eight to 12, 12 degrees, 15 degrees. You start getting to 20 degree drops, and I've seen 30 and 40 degree drops. There was a drop where it was close to 40 degree drop, where I talk about my Ohio public land buck, where I literally drove down on a Sunday afternoon, drove straight down there, slept for 45 minutes in the truck, went out and about 8.30, shot a buck that I was after, a target buck on public land down the, in the uh, national or the state forest down there. So I used that weather change because of that. That's why I went down there. I just wanted to hunt two mornings. I thought I had a really good chance because of that weather pattern. I wouldn't have gone down there otherwise, but it was major, huge winds uh, accompanied that weather front i think up to 50 mile an hour i was setting up a pop-up blind on friday in wisconsin for saturday's opener and the pop-up blind blew into the draw it just blew away from me i had to go about 100 yards down and get it it just i couldn't hold on it was like a kite that just flew off on that pop-up blind so very severe weather brings about that major temperature up and then what happens deer feed five times in a 24-hour period and that's really important to understand because they're going to feed twice during their bedding hours back in the bedding areas are going to get up browse around they feel that third time is right before dark and that's their major feeding of the day they go to the most high quality food imagine they've been sitting eating browse debris acorns hard to digest food sources all day they want to rush to a heavy green crop something really fresh maybe beans in december whatever it might be but they're going to their preferred feed source corn in november greens in october but they're hitting that food source and they're packing on the pounds and then they're living high in the hog safe and social all night on a secondary destination food source, ag fields, big open hardwoods on public land, whatever it might be, somewhere it keeps them safe. That's where they spend all night. But boy, when a big storm goes through for a day and a half, that's usually how long some of these big storms are, they're missing six, seven, eight quality feedings. And that's a bad thing. They're losing energy. There's major stress with a major storm, noises all around. They're stressed out. They're burning energy just sitting there doing nothing. They're feeding very little. And then the temperature's dropping, so they have to use calories and energy to stay alive and keep warm. I'm really excited to introduce to you our new food plot seed company, and seed company in general, but WHS Wildlife Blends. These are our first two mixes, the Big Boost Brassica and the Fall Green Blend. And those are my personal mixes. You know, I've been experimenting with mixes and food plot mixes since 1998, so this is the 25th season. And a lot of those have a lot of roots back into buckwheat 
peas, tilled radish, and all kinds of brassica blend, even mixing with brassica with clover back in the day in 98, 99. And so these are the culmination of all those mixes and all those experimenting throughout all the days and uh, and also all the strategies that we bring to you about food pots here. So the supply is limited. We're just doing this as a first time run this year and um, they're going really well. The sales are really going fast. So I appreciate you guys checking it out. It's on our website, in our store and uh, really appreciate you taking a chance on us and, uh, and really planting and, and buying these and planting these mixes that are my own personal favorites that you can put in the ground on your hunting land this fall. That's the setup. So obviously when that changes, when movement has been suppressed for some reason, weather related, then when that goes to the backside of that front, they're ready to move. It's colder, the system changed. Should, it could have gone from 35 mile an hour winds to 15 mile an hour winds because it still could be windy. Still could be cloudy. Still could be low pressure because there's another storm coming. Yeah, that's key. Can't go by pressure, high pressure, low pressure because if this big thing just happened, and it moderates, it doesn't matter if there's another storm coming in two days and the, and the pressure is low. It only matters that these conditions subsided, the temperature went down, and that's when they're gonna move. And then you can do it all over again when that next major system comes in, regardless of whether the pressure is high or low. The norm takes place after that. The longer the norm, the bigger the impact, you know, up to about five days. I'm sure deer don't really care if it's nine days or four days. They don't have the mental capacity to know that. Bottom line is one day versus five, two days versus five. They get to establish that norm where it's high of 62, 61, 59, 61, just pretty boring days. And all of a sudden there's a high of 38. That's major, major, major change uh, took place to make that happen. And they're gonna definitely notice that. And it's all relative. It doesn't matter if it's 70, 70, 70, 70, and drops down to 50 or 50, 50, 50, and drops down to 30. That's why when you're down in Florida, it's 85, 88, 85, 87, all of a sudden there's a high 79. That's a big jump or big drop for down there. Look at the morning lows. A lot of times because of clouds or wind, a morning low in an otherwise boring week will stick out because daytime highs are relatively the same. Morning lows are relatively the same, except for one morning that dips six, seven degrees, and that can be that morning to hunt that week if you can actually get out into the woods and hunt. And again, this is all, you know, you have to be able to get off for work and be able to do this. I've always made job decisions since the late in the 80s so that I could actually take advantage of these weather conditions because I didn't have a lot of vacation time. I worked at a bank, at two weeks vacation, didn't get paid much, couldn't take unpaid time off, but they did let me take a half day off at a time. And you can bet I used those time, that time wisely when I was out in the woods and made sure that when I went out in the woods, I had a good, reasonable chance of success. Number four, fields, trail cam, dead deer numbers. Watch these things during the summer. Watch those fields, watch your trail cameras. Notice when you're seeing that mature buck, what was different about that day versus the other day based on weather. And what you're going to find is on average, whether, you know, it could be your neighbor just went in to hang some stands and spoke some deer. The bottom line is just consistency and you're, and you're looking at things that are relative and just comparing apples to apples. A lot of times you're gonna see is you're gonna see a dip in temperature. It's gonna be after major fronts have, went, have gone through major rainstorms and you're going to see that movement. And that'll prove to you during the summertime that those tactics that you're using during the summer can directly influence your fall hunt. Now is the time to practice these, recognize these. This is the entire algorithm that I developed for outdoor life in 2016 in their November rut issue. I wrote a big article in there and I developed an algorithm for that of how I had hunted since the early 90s using the weather. And that algorithm was then transferred into the HuntWise HuntCast app that I helped develop over the last two to three years. And that's why I partner with HuntWise because we could stick that algorithm in there and influence how you guys hunt positively with the actual true influencers of movement. And you can compare it. I mean, it's kind of just, again, look at those extremities. Great moon phase, November 2nd, let's say it's West Virginia and it's a high of 94 and 30 mile an hour winds. Probably a really bad day to go out in the woods regardless of what the moon phase says. I'll, on the flip side, if it's 57, four days later and a bad moon phase, get out in the woods. It's gonna be one of the best days of the year. You can never let a bad or good moon phase trump a good weather day or bad weather day. The weather is what actually influences the hunt and deer movement. And you know what's cool? Some of the studies show, well, weather doesn't influence the, the movement that much. I'm talking about daylight movement where it's just dark. You know, a lot of times 
that weather phase is what keeps that buck from moving out of his bedding area before dark or before uh, the end of daylight, or it gets him out a half hour before in front of your arrow. And that's the difference. He might have moved the same amount overall, but he's moving a higher percentage during the daylight. And that's very important to understand because we as hunters only care about movement during the daylight. The studies don't show and differentiate one versus the other. In overall deer movement, you will see deer moving greater distances during the summer when the weather conditions are good. That's why a lot more get hit on the road. So watch for those dead deer counts when the weather actually changes. I had a, a, a chapter in my 2012 book that I talked about um, roadkill maps for success where you're looking at where are these deer consistently dying on the roads, look at aerial photos, understand how deer move through fields and funnels and why they're getting hit on the road. You can take that same formula and apply it to public land, private land, anywhere you hunt just like this concept right here of hunting by the weather you can apply it to anywhere you hunt it truly works and you want to predict the best times to get out in the stand this year learn to follow the weather in the summer it'll guide you to success this fall folks i want to make sure you check out my web class video series whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.